the founder of Some Foods, the maker of Some Sweet. That is the most spectacular sweetener that there is on the market. And you can get a hold of it if you'd like at over at uh, sumsweet.com. That's S-U-M-S-W-E-E-T.com. Also, the, the name of this broadcast is also the name of my practice or my former practice, which was Sarah Nutritional Therapy. It stands for Sugar Addiction is Real. And if you like this broadcast, I ask you to just give us a thumbs up, like the video if you're watching it on YouTube, or if you're watching it on Facebook or wherever you're watching this at, go ahead and like the video. If you have, um, give me a comment, let me know where you're watching us from, and I ask you to subscribe to um, subscribe to our channel. Um, you can find us on Facebook at S A I R N T. That is uh, Sair Nutritional Therapies. S A I R N T at Facebook, and then also S A I R N T on YouTube. And if you're watching on Instagram, that would be at Some Sweet Foods on Instagram and Some Sweet Foods on Twitter. Just want to remind us that this is National Diabetes Month. November is, and we're on 23 days in. And if you don't know what your risk is for diabetes, or if you would like to know what your risk is, you can go over to the American Diabetes Association, and they have a quiz over there that you can take to help you know what your risk is. Uh, let's see, a little bit more housekeeping if we should have to do that. We do have a guest with us today that's going to come on, and um, she's going to be talking with us about life after sugar. So isn't that, it's fascinating, and we're going to have a great conversation with her. So um, also you can catch the audio version of this on um, wherever you find your podcasts, wherever you get your podcast through, you can find the audio version of this. So just like us, follow us, and subscribe on all of our, uh, to any of and all of our social medias. Yes. So, and I'm hoping that everything is working well because I have to kind of go out from screens and things. So give me a moment because I can't do everything in the same screen anymore. Um, that's the way the new platform is set up. But I am sending out the invite for our special guest, and she's going to be joining us here in just a few moments. So, yes, so very excited about this. And, um, yeah, you know, the holidays is coming up. Thanksgiving is coming, and you're going to be eating all of your delicious Thanksgiving food. I would admonish you to... Be mindful of the sugar intake that you are having and um, to just watch that. You don't need two desserts, you know, just one. Cut back, try and cut back. Um, your body will thank you for that. All right. And without further ado, we're going to jump right on in with our special guest, Netta Gorman. So she's going to be joining us here in just a second. So... Hello. Hi. How are you? Hi. I'm good, thank you. That's great. Great. Can so, you see me? No, I can't see you. I so didn't know how I, to put the camera on. Um, I don't know. If you see the camera at the bottom of the screen next to the microphone, if you click that, then you can select your camera if it didn't auto-select it for you. No, it didn't. Uh, it doesn't show a possibility of having a camera huh I don't know do you know they actually change this platform has actually changed in uh, just last week they they did an over a major overall overhaul um, last last week or just the week prior to that like on Thursday or Friday and it was everything was brand new and I'm still learning it I don't know um, how they have what it is that they have done um but the camera is on it should be there on my screen but, all i can see is yeah, the camera it's, there. it's just black it says turn off camera uh maybe i didn't give the app permission to use my camera but i'm turning on the camera now and this is what maybe i don't know maybe it'll pop you'll pop in maybe flip the camera i don't know <laughs> I, I don't know. 
this technology is wonderful when it works and when it doesn't it it catches us it makes us feel like wait a minute what am i doing <laughs> yeah um i don't know maybe maybe within my test i told the, the app not to use my camera i no, I, i've never been on this app before yeah it's it's fairly it's fairly new and it's fairly new for me as well you want to um you can try we can try it and you can try and come back in and see if it'll if it'll um if it'll catch your camera maybe shall i just leave and you can i don't yes. know what to do yeah do yeah I press leave yes i'll 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 remove you and bring you back all right so we're gonna we're gonna try and get the camera and you know that's the that's technology folks that's the way it is and that's the way it is that's you know it's like i said we're doing this and we're going live it's not perfect but we're doing it um we're i'm doing it anyway you know um because if i if i had to wait for it to be perfect honestly you guys would never see me you would never see me but oh my gosh let me tell you about something great that i have going on here um Oh, I wish I could share the screen with you all so you could see this. I wish I could share the screen. Well, just to say that I've been working very, very hard behind the scenes because I wanted to give people an opportunity to, um, as we're coming into the new year, to to purchase, to, to be able to get some sweet to be able to get nutritional um, advice and services. So I know that I have been saying for a while that I have um, an app and that I have, um, that, that there is a Sarah Nutritional Therapy app, that there is, um, and you know, of course the sweetener and all of that, but I found a, a very neat way to put them together and I've been working very hard to put to put everything together in membership kits that you all can purchase that you can all that you can join and not only that when you join the membership when you get a subscription with the membership I'm like telling it I, I function, but when you get a subscription with the membership um, we're gonna uh, also give you an opportunity to help you to build your credit I mean, when I really, t when I, oop, I'm excited about it. I'm really excited about it. So yeah, so you, when you, when you see it, you're gonna, um, when we roll it out, it's gonna be phenomenal. So let me try and invite our guest back. I'm excited to hear what she has to say. Her program, Life After Sugar, I'm like so excited about that. So let's see if I can get her back and get her backstage again. And... So I'm really excited about that, you guys. Um, okay, there we go. So she'll be joining us back and hopefully the cameras will work. If it doesn't, we're just gonna have a conversation. Hey. Hey, it didn't come back. I don't know what's going on. No. <laughs> well, that's okay. We'll just have a conversation. Okay. All right, fantastic. Technology, huh? Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But I am so excited. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining me today. I'm excited to hear your story and how you came um, to your, um, your, your group, your website, and all of that about life after sugar. Please tell us about Netta Gorman. Okay. Welcome. All right. Well, you've got to know that um, I don't have a background in nutrition or anything like that. I'm just a regular mom and a, and a teacher of English as a second language in French speaking Quebec. And I come from England, as you can hear, but I've been living in Quebec, Canada for about 30 years. And um, up until my mid 40s, I was the world's number one sweet tooth. <laughs> 
Um, I, I was a chocoholic. I uh -huh. love desserts. People used to make desserts just for me. Um, I've always made cakes and baked and, and done all that stuff. And it, the last thing I ever wanted to do was to stop eating sugar. Right. I know the so, feeling. <laughs> yeah. I mean, who gets out of bed in the morning and says, I know, I'll just stop eating sugar today. Right. <laughs> so uh, that I never thought of that. And the thing was that I was um, getting, my, my digestion was getting worse and worse. And I had chronic constipation since my early 30s. Mm -hmm. And by the time I was in my mid 40s, I was like going to the bathroom like once a week. Okay. Yeah. So that wasn't very comfortable. It wasn't a good place to be. I was suffering. I was uh, bloated. I felt like I had like backache. It went all like my whole body was aching. Uh huh. Um, and it was, I, I ended up talking to a nutritional therapist. Okay. And she kind of asked me a whole bunch of questions and to make a long story short one of the things that she suggested to me was for a temporary period of two weeks was to stop eating sugar and sweeteners and flour all grains uh-huh uh-huh and i said no thank you <laughs> are you crazy <laughs> i mean why would i even do like why would anybody do that and what does that have to do with my digestion? You know, right. the doctors kept, kept telling me, just eat more fiber, eat more fiber. Right. And I was. And it was making everything worse. But surely the doctors couldn't be wrong. Right. So I kept doing what they asked me to do, and it kept getting worse and worse. So after a while, after I, I was like in denial um, mm -hmm. for weeks after she said, you know, maybe it's a good idea to cut down on the sugar. And in the end, my digestion wasn't getting any better. So I thought, look, I'll give it a try uh, for two weeks. What have okay. I got to lose? What have okay. I got to lose? So I credit myself with the open-mindedness at least to give it a try. Right. I had right. no idea what I was going to eat. Okay. I mean, she, she like left me a list of whole foods, fruit and vegetables and and meat and fish and I was like yeah but where's like yeah so what am I gonna eat <laughs> right right so up until that time you okay so you were eating lots of carbs lots of starchy foods and sugar yeah and it didn't feel like it was a lot to me I mean first of all I didn't know what carbs were right because I didn't like I didn't see food in those terms of macronutrients it was just like food right and you know, I had grown up that when you have a meal, you need, yes, you need the meat and the vegetables, but you also need a side, right? So you need mm -hmm. potatoes or rice or pasta or something, or the meal is not complete. Okay, yeah. And then, of course, you need a dessert because, I mean, who just, like, finishes a meal and then goes away and does other stuff, right? Right. <laughs> Gotta have so, dessert. <laughs> yeah, yeah, who does that? Yeah. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I just thought I ate normally. Um, so when she gave me this list and sent me to the grocery store, I didn't know really what to do. And I uh -huh. spent like two hours at the grocery store that first time uh -huh. looking at labels, picking things up, looking at labels, putting them back on the shelf because every single thing had either added sugars or some type of added flour or starch on the label. Right, right. Right. And I, I thought, what am I going to eat? Ice cubes? Yeah. So yeah. I ended up I ended up kind of figuring out that what was the best thing for me to do is to go around the outskirts, the perimeter of the grocery store, and that's where the real food is. That's where the unprocessed <laughs> food is. So that's where the fruit and vegetables, the meat, fish, seafood, the, the right. dairy or fermented dairy like yogurt um, and really the nuts and the seeds the eggs and the cheese that's where real food hangs out is around the edges of the grocery store exactly yes and it was a big revelation for me uh-huh so then um by the time i figured that out i'd been in the grocery store for a couple of hours <laughs> and 
it, I went home and I was like, okay, I guess I have to cook stuff now. Okay. It's not coming in a box already made for me. Right, right. Oh. And then the next thing was like, what am I going to have for breakfast in the morning? Like, what, what do you have for breakfast if you don't have toast or cereal? What, mm -hmm. what is that? Or, you know, so I ended up, the first breakfast was a couple of eggs okay. and some cheese and some cucumber. Okay. Yeah. So eggs, cheese, and cucumbers. Okay. And, and I was like, I can guarantee you that I am the only person in my town eating this for breakfast. Eggs, cheese, and cucumbers. You know, that sounds like a pretty good breakfast. <laughs> well, it does now. <laughs> But the first time, it just sounded weird. Uh-huh. And okay. I thought, you know, this isn't breakfast. This is lunch. But how did you feel after you had that After you had that first breakfast? Can you recall that? I felt weird. Okay. <laughs> it was like I didn't get, like, any kind of reaction right away. Mm -hmm. But later on that morning, you know, usually I'd have, like, a little sugary snack or something at, like, 10 in the morning. Mm -hmm. And it was like, it was 11 a.m. and I kind of forgot to snack. Okay. okay. And I didn't right. need, I felt like I didn't need the snack. I just forgot that I was hungry or I just wasn't hungry. So you and guys, then, everyone heard that. Eggs with cheese and some cucumbers. And how long did that meal satiate you for? Oh, till lunchtime. Okay. So. Yeah. So, hmm, right. yeah. So there I was. I had my lunch. My lunch also didn't have any kind of starchy sides. And I somehow survived after lunch without a dessert. You know, because I'm, I'm like the sort of person, if, I'm gonna, if I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it 100%. Mm -hmm. Right. And I was brought up like that. If you're going to do something, do it properly. Right. So I was like, I'm doing this for two weeks. I mean, I didn't like it, I didn't want to, but I was doing it. Okay. Um, I can't, I honestly don't remember what I had for lunch, but I, I mean, I remember that I followed the rules, as it were. Mm -hmm. And again, usually I would have, like my, at work, my drawer would be full of afternoon snacks. Right. And I, I didn't feel I needed one. Okay. So we got through breakfast, we got through lunch, and with no snacks in between. Yeah, that was like a revelation to me. Uh, and and then I went home and I made dinner for myself, my family, and um, I left off this whatever starchy side, I don't know, rice or pasta or whatever it was. They mm -hmm. had it, but I didn't have it. Uh-huh. And instead of that, I gave myself more of the rest, more of the whatever meat we were having, whatever vegetables we were having. I just gave myself more because I wanted to like fill up my plate so it looked full. Right. And this I did for the two weeks on variations of the same thing. Not always mm -hmm. eggs and cheese and cucumber and not always the same meal. Right. Variations of those meals. And what happened was that around day four of the first week, mm -hmm. I remember it was a Saturday, and I remember saying to my husband, look, I'm just feeling a little bit kind of washed out. I'm just going to have a nap. And okay. I never have naps, never. And so even when I was consuming sugar, I never used to need naps. So I lay down for a nap, and I kind of got up two days later. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so I was, the whole weekend, I was out for the count I, I mean I could function like I have a family to take care of but it was like as soon as I could <laughs> I just lie down again mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I was like what's happening to me and I had just enough energy to look it up and realize that for some people myself included you know this was what people call detox or you know yes. yeah yes. some kind of reaction of my body saying hey I'm not getting the, the sugar rush that I'm used to, right? Yeah, you know, I'm checking out. The withdrawals different. It's right. different for it's different for people for for everybody. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, and it hit me really hard. 
Um, but some people get through it with no symptoms or anything. But for me, I get all the symptoms on the list. I got them all. Mm-hmm. And I felt, I felt washed out. I felt exhausted. Um, I had a headache. And yep. I also felt kind of like depressed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I remember going for a walk with a friend of mine. And I remember telling her, you know, I feel so mad that I feel depressed. <laughs> right. And I then I read about ups it. ups and downs. Yes. Yeah, yeah, totally. And then I read about it and I realized, oh, it's just normal. Some people go through these symptoms. Mm-hmm. And the crazy thing was that the next, like, this was day four, five, six, let's say, that by the next day seven, the second week, I was back on my feet. Mm-hmm. And I was feeling so much more energetic. So I felt just great. Um, and I, I couldn't believe like how much more energy I had and that I wasn't having energy slumps. Uh-huh. And I felt that my pants were a little bit looser in one okay. week. And I'm, one week. I'm pretty small to begin with. But, you know, and I was like, well, I haven't been like doing any exercise. I haven't you know, sweated it out or anything like that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Why are my pants getting looser? And I hopped on the scale uh-huh. and I lost a couple of pounds. Okay. So after one week, your energy returns. Did it? Did you feel better than you had prior to starting this, um, this we'll call it a detox. Did, did you feel better than you had before? Yes. Yes. Oh, definitely. Yes, uh-huh. and it, it wasn't night and day, but it was certainly felt better than when I was like on my back for the weekend. But I felt more energetic than I do usually, and that energy felt like it was more stable like all day long. Uh huh, uh huh. Okay. And... So, no, go ahead, go on. Yeah, yeah, so I was like, well, okay, cool. I'm going to carry on with this for the second week. Mm-hmm. No cheating, no backtracking, you know, because as I said, I, I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it properly. And I also kept myself accountable because I kept posting on my Facebook page, my personal page, you know, and I was like, right. I'm doing this. And then my friends were like, you go. <laughs> right. <laughs> Let us know how it goes for you. <laughs> yeah, because we're not doing it. <laughs> so, um, so I carried on the second week and then... At the beginning of the third week, I spoke to the nutritional therapist and she said, you know, you, you know, well done. I, how are you feeling? I said, I'm feeling great. And she said, you know, you can start reintroducing, you know, one of those starchy sides or something sweet. And I said, no, <laughs> no, thanks. Um, I'm going to carry on for a third week because I just feel so good. So something that we didn't mention was that when you started out in the beginning, you said that you were like chronically constipated. Yeah. So did that relieve itself within the first or the second week? It took longer than that. Okay. It took longer than that. Cause one of my problems was that I wasn't making enough stomach acid. Okay. So I had to take some hydrochloric acid in pill form and digestive enzymes. And that got things moving. But the fact that I wasn't eating sugar was helping me to cope with those symptoms first. Okay. Because I just felt better all around. And my bloating went way, way down. Mm -hmm. Even though Mm -hmm. my digestion wasn't back to normal yet, it took several months, certainly my bloating was much better. And just all around, I wasn't having aches and pains anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, so that all was getting better and so that helped a lot and she also asked me to introduce more fermented foods and drinks into my diet so I started making my own yogurt that that first couple of weeks I started and that also helped a lot because a lot of commercial foods fermented foods are not really probiotic but the homemade stuff I was making that was Mm -hmm. truly probiotic so that was helping a lot yeah yes Yes. Yes. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. So you went, um, you went two weeks, you did the full two weeks and then you said, no, I'm not introducing this. I'm not bringing that stuff back. So how did you progress from there to your, um, to, to where you are today 
and how how and how are you managing with your family i mean did did you change it up for everybody or you just kept the change to yourself this was my thing this was my thing um i don't and never have done this was six and a half years ago in 2015 mm -hmm. and um i've never like asked my family to do anything they don't want to do or anyone else come to that but the thing is i'm the cook in the family Right, so right. What I make is what ends up on their plate, and that's what they eat. Right. And if they're not happy, they can make their own dinner. <laughs> <laughs> but it has had it has had a subtle um, effect on them, and probably more than it would have if I had started to impose it on them. Right. So they they could see me happily with with a you know a plate full of food, happily enjoying my food feeling better, looking better. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so, I mean, you know, what can they say? I mean, anyone who loves you is happy when you're happy. Right, right, right. And that's so, what I did. I cut out sugar. When I cut out sugar, I just quit buying it for the house. You know, I was, I'm the person who buys the groceries and I just quit buying it for the house. My daughter would ask me for sugar and um, I was, oh, okay, you know, but then eventually they eat what mommy eats, you know, it's kind of, if mommy's saying something is good, they're looking at it saying, hey, I want that too, you know? <laughs> right, absolutely, yes. And my, my daughter was seven at the time when I first stopped eating sugar. And it wasn't just sugar for me, you know, it was sugar and flour and sweeteners. Mm -hmm. So it was quite a big change. And they, you know, other people are other people. And whether they're in your family or not, they have their own path to follow. Right. So if my child wanted pasta, I would make her some pasta, but not eat it myself. Right. And she used to eat pasta, or I used to make her pasta like three or four times a week. And now it's like a couple of times a month. Right. Right. It just, it just gradually, she kind of forgot about it. And sometimes she's like, oh, mom, can you make me macaroni and cheese? And I'm like, okay. You know, it's not a bad thing every now and again. It's fine. Right. Um, and I kind of, you know, I kind of go, went with um, reverse psychology. <laughs> I'm mm -hmm. no psychologist, but I used to buy her cookies mm -hmm. um, until the day she said to me, Mom, can you stop buying me so many cookies? They're too sweet. I don't want oh. them. Yeah. Okay. okay. And I want it to come from her. Right. Right. And, and then... She, yeah, sorry. Um, no, no, no. I was saying, and that's a good point. That's a, that's a good, that's a good point. Cause I never, um, I just stopped buying stuff, you know? So like, I knew that my, my daughter had a sweet tooth like mine. And, um, so I just, in order for her not to have it, I just wouldn't buy it. And, and I just, I limited and, you know, okay, well one, you know, if you, we're not getting a whole pack of candy bars, you can just get one. And when that's gone, it's gone you know yeah that's great that is yeah. that's great you know we have different approaches and it's like for halloween you know she has all these candies what does she do with the candies she sorts them into you know she sorts them by different types of candies into little piles and she likes mm -hmm. making little piles of them and then they stay in the cupboard till next year <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know she marie condos her candies <laughs> and then I'm like, well, are you going to eat any? She's like, nah. Yeah, I think that, I think that with with our kids, a lot of times they see what we do, and they they really do, they follow what we do. So it's it's not do as I say, it's do as I do. That's really no. the thing that really gets going with your kids, and yeah. you know, and with other people too, because when they see that you're doing, you're like, oh no, then they're like, oh, okay, well maybe. Maybe I'll try it. Let me, let, me, let me just, I'll see. But let me see how that works for you first. You know, there's a lot of times where people say, let me see how that works for you. <laughs> right, right. And it's funny because um, last year, you know, she asked me to interview her for my podcast, my Life After Sugar podcast. And, and it's one of the earliest, I think it's episode number six, interviewing her when she was 12. And mm -hmm. I asked her on the interview, I said, do you ever feel like you have to like sneak candies or eat it you know when mommy's not looking and she's like no i can mm -hmm. eat whatever i want 
Right, right, right. So let's. So that's a great point. So tell me about tell me about your life after sugar and how did you come up with that? How did you start that? Um, it started off about three years after I'd been living sugar free. Um, I started giving workshops, in person workshops, like in the good old days before COVID. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and because I'm a teacher, I've been a teacher at, at um, a technical college for uh, 27 years. Because I'm used to teaching, you know, I, I wanted to teach about this discovery and how great you can feel mm -hmm. without sugar. So I started doing that. People were showing up. And then I decided one day to um, film it and to sell the recording. And I sold 60 of them. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, and this, this is like in a small town. It was all in French, because it's all French speaking here. I did it all in French. And I thought, oh, well, if people are that interested, if that many people are, that are interested, then um, maybe I can take this online. And, it's, you know, instead of like me doing the same presentation each time, I can just record it and put it online for people to, right. to access. So I made a website in French which sounds easy enough, but it took me months. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, and then just before the website went live, I got into the media, the French speaking media here in Quebec. And then that kind of got really that snowballed and I got hundreds of people um, and they were buying my stuff and they were following me on Facebook and it was a big mm -hmm. thing. And I thought, wow, cool. Um, yes. And then keto came along. <laughs> yes, because I was going to say, now, what you yeah. initially started out doing sounded a lot like keto. So, I mean, you know, it sounded, you know what I'm saying? Because it, it, yeah. it, it just kind of goes kind of close there, you know, um, right. that way of but, eating. Yes, and people get me mixed up with keto often mm -hmm. um, to the point where, I, again, you know, I had to do a whole podcast episode to say I'm not keto. I'm netta. <laughs> I am not what I eat. <laughs> And I certainly don't like following rules and having to track stuff or right. freaking out about whether I'm under 20 grams of this or over so many grams of fat. And it's like, it's so not my personality. Right. But the idea, I mean, the whole approach of keto is great, you know, no sugar, unprocessed foods. But what I was finding was that the, um, the keto groups were more aggressive than I'm comfortable with the people. Yes, yes. They're very, um, that's not keto. <laughs> right, right. The keto police. And then yeah. what started happening is that, of course, the food industry caught on to the fact that keto is the thing. And mm -hmm. two things happened. It became a weight loss thing, which, you know, I'm, I'm not about that at all. And then mm -hmm. it became a marketing thing where every store now has a keto section and the irony is that the food i eat and was eating for years is like the unprocessed real whole produce foods you know that's mm -hmm. in every single grocery store you don't need a specialized section of a store for that it's already there mm -hmm. and the specialized keto section it was all processed foods Right. And keto is really hard to do. I think people, I mean, it's easy enough to do, I'll say it's easy enough to do to start out with. So when you make that initial change, but one of the things about it is when it, when you are consistently, you have to do what works for you and for your body. That's what I tell people. And I couldn't do keto because I actually tried keto and I'm, I'm a very, you know, regimented type person. So, Hey, it was fine. I could track and all that kind of stuff. I didn't have a problem with that. But what I found out with keto was that I started to have electrolyte issues. And I see that a lot of times with a lot of people having electrolyte issues and also having issues with their digestion and being constipated. So those are some serious issues that come alongside um, with keto. And those are easily resolvable with some addition of, you know, increasing certain types of carbs in your, in your diet or certain types of food in your diet that are restricted that you can't have when you're on keto. And I think yeah. that, um, and especially when you need, um, as, with, when it comes down to needing your electrolytes, I mean, that's what keeps the ticker going and all of that. Um, you, 
you know, that's something that you really can't mess around with. And being so regimented on keto, I, I found that doing a uh, the dirty version of keto is probably about the best thing or doing like a maintenance type version and not being quite as low on the carbs because you because a lot of times people are missing out on their um, their um, minerals their potassium uh, their magnesium their well salt is always going to be never really going to be a problem but in particular that potassium and magnesium people are missing out a lot on and yeah. so when they're doing keto and um, yeah but um, so but so you started the group or, or you started to you recorded and you you started your, you started your website you put your recordings there it's going great people are following you got picked up by the news and all of that and so here you are so how many years have you been doing this now well um it's been three years in french and, okay. and I, I had online courses and i made a membership and i got people in there it's great Okay. And I still have I still have my membership in French. And the beginning of 2021, I decided to also um, pivot to English, the English speaking world, because, you know, English is my first language and my French is good, but it's still English is my first language. And right. it's, of course, a much, much bigger population that I can impact and help out and, mm -hmm. and inspire. So the first thing I did was I created my podcast. Okay. And that took off more than, I just passed 65,000 downloads today. All right, yay. Yeah. So tell everybody the name of the podcast. Life After Sugar. Life After Sugar. There is life after sugar, right? There is. Oh, totally, <laughs> totally. And it's really, it, it's all kinds of stories of, not just my story, but stories of people whose lives have been completely transformed just from cutting down sugar. They're not necessarily 100% sugar free, but any reduction is a win. Yes, say that again, say that again. Any reduction in sugar is a win. Yes, that's, what, that's, that's the message that I just keep trying to get people to, you know, to cut, cut out the sugar. Now, in your course of time, you found, did you find that sugar was causing a lot of, causing problems that you were experiencing? Yeah, I, I didn't even realize I had the problems until they went away. Mm -hmm. So although I've always been relatively small, I still had like post-baby fat and I had like a muffin top and, you know, I wasn't, I, like my clothes were tight. So, I mean, I had like 15 extra pounds that melted away mm -hmm. and now I've got my 20-year-old body back. Okay. Honestly, I haven't, <laughs> be, like, and I haven't put on an ounce ever since. Like, I lost okay. the extra. And mm -hmm. it, it's, it has kept completely stable because I don't eat foods that stimulate my insulin that make me store extra fat. That's See, and that's mine. it. Yeah, and that's it right there. That's that's the that's the thing that that um, if if people could just get that message about uh, about um, not eating foods that spike your insulin, and yeah. sugar is one of those big things that spikes your insulin, and you know, and, and I mean, where I've been around a culture of, you know, like eat six small meals a day and I'm like, you know, and you do that to lose weight. I mean, that's the thing was like lose weight. And, and like my motto is you're not trying to lose weight. You're trying to lose fat. Let's deal with the fat issue because it's right. not weight. Because weight consists of three things. That is um, water, muscle, and fat. And the other two, we don't have a problem with this, just it, unless you have other metabolic issues. Which, by the way, did you, um, were you ever diagnosed with anything close to, by consuming so much sugar, did you, did you ever find out what, whether or not you were uh, pre-diabetic or, or anything like that? Did you ever come close to that? Or uh, It sounds yeah. like you, you experienced some metabolic issues, but tell us about sure. that. Yeah, so I'm one of these people that they call... Uh, skinny on the outside, fat on the inside. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, my blood tests came back with my ALT scores, the liver enzymes, four times what they should be. Mm. And yeah. I couldn't find anyone to explain it properly to me. And I could see on, on the printout that it was higher than it should be. 
But mm -hmm. it's like the, do the doctor was like, oh, that's your liver. I'm like, well, what about it? I mean, that's my liver. you got to tell me what's wrong with it. Right. So I had to be my own teacher. I had to, you know, educate myself. Mm -hmm. And it ended up, I wasn't uh, diagnosed with having a fatty liver, but it, but I understood from this, from all my results, that it was, it was definitely signs of a fatty liver, even if I wasn't diagnosed with having a fatty liver. Right. And of course, I didn't know that a fatty liver is caused by fructose and sugar yeah. is one molecule of glucose, one molecule of fructose. I didn't know any of that stuff. Right. Right. And but, the fact that. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, but I was just going to say, but when I stopped eating sugar, six months later, when I had another blood test, everything was back to normal. Yes. Yes. And I think that we really, the people, you need to know that she just, she just hit the nail on the head. One molecule of, of glucose, one molecule of fructose or fructose or however you want to say it. And that molecule of fructose, fructose is what goes to your liver. So if you switch over to agave nectar, which is mostly fructose or fructose, or any sweetener that is mostly fructose, that before your body can use it, has to go to your liver for processing and processing in your liver so it can turn it into glucose so that your body can take it up. Now, do with that as you will, but that's the simple, the simple fact of it. And when you eat regular sugar, you're just getting, you're getting one of each, but still, that one that is the fructose has to go into the liver for processing. So if you just eat straight fructose, that's why high fructose corn syrup is so bad, is if you're just eating that straight, it's got to go to your liver for processing. And here, Netta said she was skinny on the outside and fat on the inside. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I mean, the actual symptoms of having a fatty liver, the problem there is that you... It, you don't feel it until it's too late. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that, 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 you know, and I've, I've, I've been talking to a lot of people that every, with all of this is like been silent. You're they're they're um, just going along, eating the way that they want to eat, eating all the sugar that they want to eat, whatever that the way of eating that they have, they're doing that. And they're not, Hey, they're going along until, all of a sudden it's like they collide with you know a brick wall they hit the wall so to speak and it's like what's going on and then they find out about the diabetes or the metabolic issues so on and so forth and I mean that's what happened that's even what happened with me is I found out about my metabolic issues I'm going along I'm eating all the sugar that I want and, and you might have had the you might have had the greatest sweet tooth in Canada but I had the greatest sweet tooth right here in the United States <laughs> <laughs> all right you win <laughs> yeah you know it's people sometimes think that you can you know someone like myself who's sugar-free um, you know, was eating, already eating healthy. I mean, I wasn't eating the most unhealthy diet on the planet, but I certainly was eating sugar and flour every single meal and every single snack. Mm -hmm. And you were talking about, you know, the six small meals a day. I was eating three meals, two snacks, because it was just the norm. That's what I was told to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. I never thought about it. I never questioned it. Um and then when I stopped eating sugar, I realized, hey, I'm just not hungry that often. Right, right. And it, yeah. and the snacks fell away. And then gradually, I wasn't even hungry three times a day. And then it took me a long time to kind of accept that it wasn't unhealthy for me to listen to my hunger signals, mm -hmm. which, which weren't hunger signals before. They were just blood sugar spikes and crashes before, nothing to do with hunger. How could it be hunger? I was eating five, six times a day. Right. I, you know, I never knew what, nobody knows what hunger is if they're eating six times a day or even if they're eating three times a day. Right, right. You know, and when so I, that, put, sorry, oh, no, please. Go ahead. no, no, go ahead, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say that, I mean, it was a real eye opener for me to 
realized that here I was eating twice a day and feeling and never feeling hungry, whereas previously I would be eating five to six times a day and feeling starving. That's, yeah, that's what I, that's what I was going to say. When I quit eating sugar, I didn't eat anything because <laughs> I wasn't hungry. I don't, as a matter of fact, they, I mean, I, I don't have much of an appetite even now. I mean, it's like I have to really get hungry, like get, really get hungry. And then I'll eat and I try to make sure that when I feel hunger, it's like, oh, well, let me go ahead and eat. If I'm busy, I'll be like, I'll push it away and push it away. But, um, but I, I try to keep my blood sugar from dropping. That's the main thing for me is to try and keep my blood sugar now from dropping because I don't eat enough carbs, you know, like on a regular or, or enough um, sugar to have all of that glycogen already, you know, stored up and stuff. So I don't have enough of that. So my sugar, my blood sugar will, will drop um, faster than normal um, mm -hmm. from just a fasted state. And, and I found that, um, so I don't have, I mean, I don't have much appetite you know, I don't, I don't eat a lot, but my, my breakfast, lunch, and dinner, um, which would, I would mostly consume at one time, at one, one sitting, um, because I came from a religious background where I would do a lot of fasting. And mm -hmm. so I would, I would, I would do that in one sitting, but I was just thinking about that. And I was like, I'm going to have to go get a cup from the, from the local store so I can show people how much because I say drink 64 ounces I always remind everybody drink your 64 ounces of bottles you know 64 ounces of water I'm looking for my water bottle I can't find it but um, you know but I would do I, I, I would take that um, 64 ounces of um, it, it, it had to be 64 ounces it was a like a big gulp I don't know if you guys have a 7-eleven there or a quick trip but one of those double super size cups filled with the uh, icy slurpy you know mm -hmm. just that syrup and and that i mean just imagine 64 ounces of that followed by a chocolate bar and a oh. piece of pound cake <laughs> <laughs> oh my god yeah yeah and that is the standard american diet yeah 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 and that's and that's what that's what i would have for my that's what i would have for myself you know and i was just like that that would you know that would be it and then followed by something else you know that's how that's how i would break my fast okay mm -hmm. either that or a, a piece of you know something fried chicken or something like that with baked potato and all of that was just that was just not the best thing that you know when i quit sugar so you said you have 15 pounds that you lost when you quit sugar right yeah. so yeah I, I, I lost a total of 35 pounds. It's crazy, huh? Yeah. yeah. I yeah. mean, you know, I, I mean, I said I, I didn't have more than 15 pounds to lose because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm teeny, I'm 115 pounds now. Mm -hmm. You know, I should, you know, I'll disappear if I lose any more. But I'm not skinny. It's mm -hmm. like you lose the extra, but you don't, some people, you know, ask, because I'm very, popular with the fasting intermittent fasting community mm -hmm. they they love my stuff you know because of course not eating sugar does help fasting you know because um, yes. you're not hungry and you can fast for longer and, and choose better foods and all the rest of it but mm -hmm. they often ask me um how can you kind of carry on fasting um and not disappear like at some point don't you stop losing weight? You can't just keep losing and losing and losing. And they're right. Mm -hmm. Because it, pretty fast, within the first couple of months, three or four months, when I cut sugar and flour, I lost the extra weight that I had. Right. And then everything stabilized. My weight stabilized. I didn't keep losing and losing and losing because I was eating enough real nutritious food. Right. I wasn't, I wasn't under the, whatever... I don't measure my food in, cal in terms of calories, but my body was getting all the nutrition that it needs and still is, but mm -hmm. not more, not more. It wasn't producing more um, insulin that it needed. Right. So it didn't need to stock any body fat. And whatever right. food I was eating was coming out as energy. 
yes. not the stored body fat. So I am annoyingly energetic. Um, you know, and not and not in the sense I don't run marathons and I don't climb Mount Everest. It's not in that sense. Mm-hmm. I, I lead a regular life, you know, I teach and I look after my family and everything else. But what it is that I wake up with this, you know, energy for life in the morning and I go to bed with this energy for life. And there's no slumps in the middle. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yes, that's great. This, yeah. this, this, that's great. This has been, this has really been fantastic. I mean, I love your story. I absolutely love it. Um, cause there's life after sugar and I think, and, and, and more people need to get that message and get the message that you can, you can stop eating sugar. You can cut back. Even just a little cut back is uh, cutting back just a little bit is a win, you know, yeah, um, definitely make, make small changes. So, um, as we're wrapping up here, I want to everybody to know where they can find you, um, all of your social medias, give that to everybody and, uh, a last parting word of encouragement, um, to everybody that's listening. Sure. All right. So you can find me. My name is Netta Gorman. You can find me on my podcast, Life After Sugar. I have an Instagram account where I post pictures of what I eat and what I do. So you can see that, you know, life is fun and active, even when you don't eat sugar. That's at My Life After Sugar on Instagram. Um, I have a Facebook page, Life After Sugar. (laughs) You're getting the point. Um, I'm on uh, Clubhouse. I have a room there called Life After Sugar. Um, by the end of 2021, I'm opening up my YouTube channel, which surprisingly is going to be called Life After Sugar. <laughs> uh, and I have a website, which um, the, the web address is aftersugarclub.com, aftersugarclub.com. And that's where I have like videos that, you know, say, show you what, you what you eat that doesn't contain added sugars. Um, and I've got my membership there. And every now and again, I open up my program as well, the Life After Sugar program. But all year round, I have the After Sugar Club, which is my membership. Okay. 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 Fantastic. So everyone, please check out Netta and um, her Life After Sugar, all of her on, on Instagram, YouTube channels coming, aftersugar.com as, as her website. Check her out. Netta, thank you so much for coming today and sorry for the the technical difficulties, but your message rang through loud and clear. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming and sharing with us today. Uh, Thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's fantastic. This has been great. Well, everyone, that's it for today's broadcast. Again, just want to thank you. This is Sarah Nutritional Therapy. Sugar addiction is real, you guys, and there is life after sugar. All right. Till next time, peace and blessings. Bye-bye.